What's going on guys? Vic VP back on another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be going full in-depth, full detail on Project Canada. Get ready. I, it's going to be a long one. I can tell you that. It's going to be a long video. But there's a lot to discuss on this one. It's the ultimate arcade. It's, it's, stay tuned. <laughs> Alright guys, like I always said, if you're not following me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, this, that, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. That is probably the best way to get in contact with me, honestly, Instagram. I could send you videos and I could send you pictures and message. I'm very quick on Instagram, to be honest. But be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, because if you did, like I said in my other video with the overview of this, you would have seen everything. I'm the type of person that like when I'm sitting and I'm working, I get excited. I, I, I put it on my Instagram story. So you definitely would have seen like start to finish the wood cutting process of this, the vinyl, the little bit of a vinyl mishap I had with this, down to like the jolts and the, the eight biddle controllers. Just be sure to follow me. That's, that's all I gotta say about it. Now social media is social media. So I'm giving you guys a big shout out and I gotta say thank you to everybody that's watching the videos and subscribing almost hitting 5,000 subscribers on YouTube that to me is like a big uh, milestone that I always make a little thing for every thousand I'm happy to have one subscriber but to almost hit 5,000 that's that's a big deal not to mention I just started TikTok about like two or three weeks ago and that already hit like 1,300 people followers so it's just cool to know that people are watching it and uh, the only thing that I have to say about social media is is brutal Oh man, especially TikTok. Dude, TikTok is like 10% positivity and 90% straight negative. But, uh, you know, I'm not into the whole social media aspect of it, but I am also into it. Um, but damn, uh, if you're not cut out for it, if you can't take the heat, uh, you know, stay out of the kitchen. But I'm, I'm just, YouTube is where I'm at. I'll be honest, YouTube and I do always say it, I do want to stream more, I will be streaming more, I, I know Eric right now is on the, the thing, uh, but yes, I do plan to stream more, more into gaming and all that. I honestly was going to stream this one, I was going to stream like the wood cutting and the vinyl applying, it's just, I don't talk when I'm working, I'm very focused, uh, not to mention I'll drop a couple F-bombs, so I don't know how that is, maybe on the next one. But I am mentioning this thing about the subscriber count because uh, you guys can give a kudos to my wife, she gave me an idea. Uh, when I hit 5,000, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna be doing a giveaway of an arcade cabinet that I'm gonna be making for myself and I'll just make another one to give away. I have a lot of plans for that, so stay tuned. Yes, it will be a fair giveaway. Um, just stay tuned for that. But on this one today, we're gonna go in depth on Project Canada, everything from the beginning how it all started, the artwork, the challenges I faced, all the add-ons, because the add-ons on this is ridiculous. This is the most ultimate of ultimate arcade cabinets I have ever done. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to talk about with this. So again, like I said, stay tuned. This will be a long video. I can guarantee you, it might hit an hour. Just stay tuned. <laughs> so if you guys didn't see the overview video, I kind of suggest you do that. Again, I'm shooting all these videos today. I have a lot of videos lined up, like I said in the overview video, so I'm trying not to repeat myself, but be sure to watch the overview video. Yes, I'll be wearing the same clothing and all that. But again, we're gonna be going full hard in depth on Project Canada. Uh, there's, there's, there's so much to go. Just the big thing, Project Canada, yes. This will be palletized and sent out to Canada. It is going over the border. Uh, it is hitting international uh, uh, borders. Um, so that's number one. Uh, he messaged me on Instagram. We were going back and forth. He saw my buy Vic cabinet and he's like, Vic, I want it. I need it. I want it. I'm in Canada. So I already gave him a heads up. I'm like, I don't know what shipping is going to look like for this cabinet. Um, in all honesty, shipping on this is on him. Um, I spoke to a couple of people. They said that I do have to get a broker involved. I'll do the lead work, but that's kind of how conversations start. Uh, again, he messaged me, he goes, hey Vic, I love the buy Vic. I want the buy Vic, but I got to get an active marquee on that. And I said, I could do it. That's probably the most biggest like thing. 
with my by Vic cabinet design is I got a lot of people saying, can you put an active marquee? And as you can see, yes, this is running a 25 inch widescreen active marquee. Most people think of their arcades as the, ar the marquee up top. It's right there. I've been saying it on my cabinets, all the cabinets, the, active, the marquee is here. But as you can see, yes, you could put a screen for the active marquee. Then he took it a step further. He goes, hey Vic, listen, I don't want a dedicated four-way. I want to put servos on this. Then he went into, I want LED blinky on this. Then he said, hey Vic, those Logitechs, dude, I don't want that. I don't want Logitech. I need like a very good sound system. It's all here. <laughs> Again, like I said, he's an awesome dude, great guy. Um, messages me on Instagram a lot, especially when I start your build. I am full force like with you. You can message me and I'll message you back. Might not be instant, and honestly, in his case, it was very instant, because I'm always on my phone, so, you know, it is instant, but give me like a couple of minutes, like an hour, and I will reply back. So now, keep in mind, this is a PC-based system, running hyperspin. You're looking at an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M.2 SSD. He also got three separate HDDs, so regular hard drives. One is at 18 terabytes and two are at 14 terabytes. All together, it's a 40 terabyte system, but he does have three terabytes open. I'm very big on like the PC games. Um, so he does have a lot of open space for more PC games. Uh, and I forgot to mention the graphics card. This is running a 3060 Ti. Again, I can't stress it enough when it comes to these hyperspin or PC based systems. Um, I personally don't like to go cheap on the hardware. What do I mean by that? This right here is an, like a current gen PC. You could go cheaper and get a Dell Optiplex and get lower grade stuff, but I personally, I'm just not a fan of them. I have yet to do an Optiplex build 40 terabytes, but I give people the heads up. It is old refurbished hardware. You're talking like nine, eight, nine years old. So I don't know how it's gonna play current gen PC games. I don't know how it's gonna play the Switch or the 360 or the PS, I don't know. Um, again, if you are on a budget, I get it. We could try it and attempt it. It's just, I don't know what the outcome will be on that setup. But again, this is a fully decked out PC and he's got future proof. Biggest thing I said, I keep saying, the PC games are what really I keep focused on. All the emulation like PS2 and the PS1, those ROMs are set, like that's it. They're not making PS1 games, so I, that's it. The library is full on that. The current thing that they keep making are PC games. Then it went to, hey Vic, I like the Xbox One controllers, but I need more controllers. I wanna play the NES with an NES style controller. I wanna play Super Nintendo with a Super Nintendo style controller. So yes, he also does have six separate eight bit controllers. I mean, I'll break out the controllers and all that, but He's got six of these uh, alongside the four Xbox One controllers. He does also have two, I think I have them in the box. Yes, I put them in the box. He does have two Jolt light guns, gun for IR Jolts. That's the ones that are in all my videos right now where it's the Time Crisis build and the Rambo cabinet. People are going nuts for those guns. I can't stress enough, watch the Rambo detail video and you will see me go on a quick rant on the cost of the guns alone. So this customer knew what he wanted. He goes, Vic, I need that, I need that. So he went and got the jolt. He does also have two Guitar Hero guitars. He does have the DJ Hero DJ controller and he does have the two Dance Dance Revolution dance pads. Now, the way that stuff worked, he didn't actually send it to me. Those get connected via USB and RAFNET. So instead of me actually getting it and then sending it back, he has them home. I can basically just team viewer in and kind of configure them. In all honesty though, with a RAFNET, it should already be configured, but I'm always there to help. I will team viewer in and help with that. I'm right now just trying to think what else I'm forgetting. Uh, we got the LED blinky. Uh, that was, I told him, I said, I never did LED blinky and I never did the active marquee. So, you know, I'm down to try it. If you wanna, you know, let me try it. I'm gonna go in depth on the LED blinky, but yes, this is running LED blinky. And he's got the track wall. I'm literally here just trying to hopefully not forget anything. Um, and I don't think I am. But this right now is the, the it's, it's up there. Like this tops my build, this tops to date any build I have done. It's, 
the magnitude of this is just ridiculous. It's insane. Not in a bad way. It's it's insane. <laughs> then he went into Hey Vic. Listen, my whole house has these Govi LED strips or LED bulbs, whatever. So he's like, I need Govi lights on this. So. He did buy the Gobies and I put them in. It was very funny, he actually messaged me, he goes, hey Vic, you can't solder these. Um, and yes, you can solder them. I'll be really honest, the Gobie strips are thick. Um, you know, I normally either use static LEDs, like my regular RGB LED strips. Now I'm getting into the addressable LED game. On this one though, he did want Gobi because he wants this cabinet to work with his other lights. So this does have a Gobi strip in it. Basically it's got like this white thing um, and then you connect it to your phone. Like right now, the only kind of downside with it, but not in his case, I can't change the LEDs unless I go inside and push the button uh, or set it to sound active. I, apparently there's more options on the app, but he did want Govi. I personally won't do Govi ever again. Um, if you need it, I'll do it. I can't really say that. It's just the strips are very thick. Um, you know, normally when it comes to like edges, like the control panel, I like to do a little fold and keep the LED intact. This one actually I had a cut. Uh, if you actually go underneath when he gets it, you can see it. I have a strip going here. I had to cut it and then do three very tiny wires to turn an angle. Um, I'll do anything you want. That's how I work. So he does have Gobi LED strips on this as well. But now the thing is that what people don't really understand and see is like this build, there is a lot of configuring being done. Now, I don't mean it in a bad way, like, the, the, people just don't understand the magnitude, the detail, the configuration of a setup like this. There is so much going on. And people just assume, like, oh, it's a music copy and paste thing. This is where, like, social media gets into it, where, like, you know, I know I shouldn't read the comments, but I read the comments because I like to just engage with you guys. I feel like that's how people engage. And, uh, damn, like I said, uh, TikTok is just straight negative, and people are, like, just negative uh you know i don't like to i don't like to delete the comments i don't like to block people but when i make my 5k video uh i'm basically cutting that like that's i don't want to do you're gonna be negative get the fuck out like i, I can't stand it people just don't understand the magic i don't want to go off tangent people don't understand like you have to test this right here you're looking at a solid three weeks of strict testing uh, I'm gonna go, like I said, in depth on this and how everything planned out. But right now, if you look around, you can't really see behind you. But for three weeks, I have not cut another cabinet. I have focused a hundred percent of my attention on this cabinet. I do say it all the time. Anytime I do hyperspin builds, I only do one hyperspin build at a time. And there's no way that I could do three or four of them at once. There's no way. I have to devote all of this. There's so much going on in this. When I tell you testing, testing needs to be done. That's just how it is. It's not a simple copy and paste thing. Uh, you know, it's damn. <laughs> you can see it. Like somebody's comment, somebody commented on TikTok. And they just, I'm there to fight back. Don't. <laughs> then it went into Hey Vic. Listen, the way this cabinet design and where it's gonna sit, it is actually gonna be in the middle of the room. So another little add-on is that we did have to put vinyl on the rear of the cabinet. I'm telling you, this Canada man, he's killing it. He, he really put me to the test and I really appreciate him and his like patience with it because I have never done this. And as you can see, yes, this is a big thing that people keep asking me, Vic, is your, can you move your cabinet on wheels? And yes, it's on casters. Uh, I can't stress that it enough, it's, it's on casters. You could move cabinets, yes. Uh, but again, like I said, there's just so much going on. It's, it's a great feeling to know that it's here, it's working. But there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into this one. So now I said, while we were messaging each other back and forth, the biggest question was, hey Vic, how much is this gonna cost me? I'm not gonna lie, I hit him with a price. And he's like, nope, nope, not doing it. Nope, I guess like his eyes lit up and all that. So I understand, I, I get it, trust me, I get it. So I do have this option, and like I said, I'm, I'm human, you could message me, it's okay to message me. I said, listen, you know what bro, if you are not a fan of the price, you buy everything. When I say everything, you buy everything. And that's what he did. I gave him this, this specific build here, I gave him one price on contingent that he has to buy everything. The only thing that I so far did slash paid for out of my pocket, obviously was the wood, I cut the wood. Uh, the artwork, I printed the artwork, I went to artwork on that. And I bought the buttons. 
That's it. You know, besides like your wiring, the little, the little tiny stuff, that's it. He bought everything else. He swiped the credit card. He bought the PC. He sent it to me. He bought the 8 bit controllers. He sent it to me. Honestly, it was more, majority of it was Amazon. So, bought it on Amazon and then he sent it to me. The fans, the, 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 the USB connections inside, there's like three, uh, four port to one, like, there's a lot going on. The speakers he bought, the, the uh, active marquee he bought. So that's how I honestly love about this build. And that's just what I love about myself. And that's what I like to offer. It literally turns to like, listen, if you think it'll be less, do it. Give it, send it to me. Do it. Go. And that was it. And honestly, I love how this came out. It's, I, I'm just trying to tell you that I'm human. So if you, if you don't agree on the price, then fine, let's rock. You buy everything then, and then we'll, we'll work with it like that. Big thing though, I keep forgetting to mention for Canada, he, this TV is not his. This is actually my TV. This came from the House of the Dead, House of the Rock, House of Rock, the House of Rock. The, that came from my cabinet there. So in all honesty, when this gets shipped out, there is no TV for this. He has the TV home. This is a 55 inch. He's actually putting a 48 inch uh, OLED, I believe. He's got an OLED on it. But I will still send him the sensors. These are his IR sensors. Uh, I'll set, I'll post like on YouTube what the cabinet looks like being shipped out. But in all honesty, exactly what you see here, this is how it's going to be shipped out intact, control panel intact. When he does get it home, he will have to remove the control panel. I will make videos for him as far as like the USB connections and all that. But uh, again, like I said, I'm human. Uh, give me the chance. Let's talk and let's get a build going. That's how it was. Then he even went into like, hey Vic, you know, uh, the, the, I mentioned the thing about the controllers. He even wanted to add like two more extra USB uh, extenders. So I have two USB extenders up top here and two down here. Normally I use these for like in-game stuff. So like the light guns and when I'm doing like the NES controller, you got to put the dongle in. But the ones up here is actually very, it's a great touch. Uh, he wanted those because those 8 bit controllers need to be recharged. They are rechargeable controllers. So he said, hey, Vic, instead of me like going and trying to find the plug, can you just kind of put it there? And it was a genius idea. It's awesome. He also went and said, hey, Vic, I don't want big keyboards and I, want, I don't want mice. He did get like the whole little kind of mini keyboard and mouse combo. I personally am not a fan of these because I keep like double tapping, but it's grown on me and uh, it works. Uh, not to mention the trackball is a mouse too. So it, in the end, it, it works. It's, it's awesome. Once I got and I started cutting the wood, then I realized like all the controllers, like, wow, there's a lot of controllers. So a little thing that I personally added, I did add the shelf up top above, which is great. It's like, it's such a cool, like little like touch. But as you can see, yes, I have all the controllers here. I don't have the light guns here. I'm going to remove my TV and base. I'm going to put the light guns where the TV mount is. I'm going to put the screws in and he can just put it there. The only thing that I really didn't think of was the Guitar Hero um, controllers. Uh, it's just, it's such a beautiful cabinet. Um, you know, he even asked like, Vic, what do you suggest? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, you know, I'm going to let him do that. Again, the cabinet is, uh, sorry, I went to get the Guitar Hero. The cabinet is made out of wood. So if he like decides to like, like, see, like, I can't put it here. You know, I can't put it here. It's going to look weird. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, that's something where I'm going to let him kind of decide. You could put it, like, behind the deck here, but it's going to stick out. Like, I don't know. It's one of those things that I was like, Ugh, I don't know what we should do. And instead of me making the hole, um, I'm going to let him do it. So I said that was, like, the only one challenge is, like, you know, the, where are we going to put the guitar stuff? I do want to show you real quick the rear panel here. I'm gonna go in depth with the vinyl and all that. I don't have all four screws in here, but basically this panel is removable. And yes, you do have the heart of the system is in here. I did clean up the wiring as much as I could. I'll bring you in closer. I'm definitely gonna take videos for the customer. Um, the only hard thing is that there is a good, what am I gonna say right now? Two, three, that's the control, that's the joysticks. You got the trackball, we got the servos, we got the LED blinky. There is seven USB wires going to the control panel. So, you know, I can't keep those wires nice and neat because he's gotta pull them back and then put them in again. So, again, wiring is wiring. It's the best that I could do. 
Um, you don't see it right now, but I will be making a kind of wood mount to keep the PC stationary. This right here is getting shipped just like this. I've been contemplating on it. As long as I could hard mount the PC case down, it won't move in transit. This is gonna be shipped upright, just like this. It's not gonna be on its back. It's gonna be shipped upright like that. So that's like the one final thing that you don't see in the video. I'm gonna to have to just kind of hard mount the PC. But I gotta do it in a way that when he gets it, he could remove the mount. This way, it, you know, the PC could breathe. Uh, I'm not gonna encase it, but I do wanna make sure that it doesn't move in transit. But awesome stuff. Again, you do have the three exhaust fans. In his situation, like I said, he does have plans for this cabinet to be in the middle of the room. I don't know if it's in the middle of the room exactly, like I'm saying, but he does basically tell me that the rear will be viewed. And that's why he did want the artwork uh, on the rear. It's, just, it's awesome. <laughs> and then you do have, like I said, the PC fans down below. They are, they're actually bringing air into the cabinet. If you actually put your hand by the control panel on the rear where the USB is, you can actually feel the fan, like the air coming out. So it's got good circulation. Even up here, because it's a shelf, you can actually feel a little bit of wind and air coming out. So circulation is not a big deal. I'm not worried about the PC because there's just so much movement and air in it. It's, it's A-OK. -okay. It's perfectly fine. But the shelf definitely came in handy. I just thought of it. I was like, oh, we got a lot of controllers. And what are you going to do? Have boxes everywhere? And then, you know, yes, you could clean it up and all that. But in all honesty, it could fit the four Xbox controllers good side by side. And then the other like eight biddles, they kind of have to be like stacked like that. There's really no other way around it, but it works. Listen, it works. So now before we touch up on the artwork side, he actually supplied the artwork. Before I even cut the cabinet, I actually gave him like my Photoshop stencil of my, um, the comic build. Uh, and basically he, I guess he got an artist involved because whoever did the artwork, maybe it's him, if it's him, amazing job. Um, he used like Illustrator, he used um, vector files. He, it's a very amazing and detailed artwork. So he did all the artwork. I got Justin over at Gulf Coast Decals to print it. Um, he let me decide um, whether we use glossy or matte, especially with the control panel, if we should use the texture or glossy. So he put me in charge of that. And artwork on it is amazing. I'm not gonna take any credit because he did all the artwork on it. That side right there is pretty cool. It's like the Guitar Hero music. You can see like the a company. I don't want to say it. There's a, a, a lot. It is a Mad Men based cabinet, themed cabinet. I personally never seen the show. I believe it's on like AMC. Uh, it's got a great vibe to it. It's black, red, and white. Like that's what's awesome. That also translated into like the Xbox controllers were red and black and very awesome stuff. Again, Canada knew what he wanted and he did it great. Artwork is amazing. I love his left side. Let me just take you there real quick. I honestly, I'm in love with this. I mean, he's got retro gaming characters. I, I like how this is and Unfortunately, if anybody ever messaged me, no, you can't have it. This is his stuff. Um, I'm not the type to redo it. I would, no. Unless I made it, I would offer it, but this is his and you'll never see this again. That's just how it runs. But he, this, I love this side. This is just, I love everything about it. It's, it goes with the theme. He knew exactly what he was doing. It's, I love this side. I like, I like the whole artwork, but this side is my favorite because Mario. <laughs> Then it came to like the control panel and then the kick plate. I, again, for me, I understood that this is the Mad Men kind of character scheme and all that. So I don't have, I don't, I never seen it. So I don't know. We even went in depth with the under panel kind of quote here. Again, I think it's all quotes from the show. So I don't know much about it, but control panel artwork is great. He wanted the player one, player two, player three. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I had to reprint this. Um, Two mishaps, uh, life lessons I call them. Um, again, it was all on me. I didn't charge the customer, that's me. This is how I roll. Um, control panel, the first one I printed, um, my CNC is not 100%. That's what I tell people all the time because I do get, hey babe, can you flat pack? Mm. Yes and no, but basically I take my CNC file and then I make the artwork out of it. And basically my player three and player four and player two, it didn't line up good 
Um, so I basically went back to the drawing board, I fixed his file, and then I reprinted it. So this is a second run on the control panel. And that's how I am, I'm picky. Uh, I saw it, I messaged him, and I was like, I'm not gonna let this slide, I, I gotta reprint it. That also happened with the rear. Let's take it back there. The rear of the cabinet was a, I was, I was really upset. Um, it got me fired up. Um, it goes back to my CNC is not perfectly perfect. Um, basically, you know, there's a width to it and in a couple of areas it might be like an eighth of an inch off. Um, as you can see though, this panel here is indented, it's inside. Whereas like my side panel, like a lay a sheet of vinyl and then cut the outside. This one, I had to actually kind of lay it and tuck it and then apply. So it was a lot more work. My first print I did, I did it exactly, like I added an extra, I don't know, 16th of an inch on the sides and once I laid it, it got to like the middle here and it actually needed to be bigger. Uh, so what I did is I took a heat gun and I started pulling, the wording started to warp, I wasted like five hours and I was like, cr I literally laid it, I sent a picture and I was like, dude, it does, I said, I was like, it don't, it don't look right. It don't, like this out was going sideways and I was like, mm. I basically junked it. You were looking at a good hundred and luckily Justin gave me a little bit of a discount, but this right here was a good hundred to $150 uh, life lesson. So uh, again, challenges when it came to artwork and like I said, it's, it's a life lessons, but it looks great now. It looks amazing. Basically I reprinted and I did two inch bleed. So I had a very big kind of overhang here and uh, yeah, there you go. So. That was another challenge. I normally don't offer this, but he needed it, and obviously there was an add-on for that, and there you go. Then the last final little detail was this, the kind of marquee speaker panel. He didn't have any artwork for it, um, so I basically asked for black vinyl from Justin. So yes, this is black vinyl. It's not the regular black that the wood comes in, because it, it wouldn't shine like this. So yes, this is, vinyl it's black vinyl on black wood yes it is and again i did the vinyl totally the entire back again he's putting a 48 inch screen on it i'm pretty sure it'll cover um but i just said listen let me put the vinyl totally on the back just in case but yes and as you can see when it came to the marquee i had to basically cut this panel out put a slit in got the heat gun out and then i was able to push in all the edges so it just it looks clean it looks awesome I, that's that's the artwork on it it looks amazing Take a look real quick now at the sound system on this. I forgot the name of the speakers, but these speakers are like the type that like music producers have. Um, I'll be brutally honest, it was a great idea, it looks great. I probably wouldn't do this again. It was a lot of trial and error. There's an actual speaker underneath, it's a regular speaker. I couldn't decase these speakers. Um, it, it, the way it was built, I couldn't decase it. So he actually gave me and sent me this kind of speaker fabric. And basically I put the fabric over it and then I pushed the whole speaker through the wood. This is tight, that's not going nowhere. This is, that's in there, that's going nowhere. The big thing I would say with these kind of speakers, if anybody ever wants it for the future, I would definitely have to look for a trim. Gotta have like a trim over it. You might see it here, it looks a little like kind of where the vinyl is. That's because honestly the vinyl was down and then I'm pushing the speaker up, so it's like the vinyl is fighting it. It's not awful. Might, you might see it now because I mentioned it, but it's there, it looks great, I think it's fine. His audio amplifier is insane with the bass, the treble, this does also have the Bluetooth connectivity on it, you just gotta flip the switch to it. It's great. I'll be brutally honest, my builds here, I would do a Z533, the Logitech. Uh, the only thing I could say about the Logitech is the subwoofer base is different than this. Um, some might find it as a plus, some might find it as a negative, but definitely like the, unless I turn up the base on this, I don't really wanna do that, I'll let him do that. I have not really fully cranked the base on it, but hey, it is what it is. It is awesome and just, it looks, it's flush. Like that's, that's flush, it looks great. Again, my only thing for the future is that I would definitely have to look for kind of a trim mount thing. Now real quick, we'll talk about the control panel. Some people might be shocked with the control panel. I did post a video of like Mortal Kombat 11 and somebody did make a comment that said, hey Vic, Mortal Kombat 11, you need eight buttons. And yes, in all honesty, I did tell the customer I would suggest a eight button, six button layout because there is, you know, I could do it. 
but he specifically wanted the six buttons for player one and two and the four buttons for players three and four. As you can see, like I said, there is room for the eight, but he didn't want it. That's a-okay. His other big thing that he wanted, he wanted no dedicated four-way. And he didn't want any buttons here in the middle of the trackball because he didn't want to hit anything. Again, this guy is a guy that knew his stuff. He knew what he wanted. It was awesome. Great, awesome stuff. Like my Scarface build, the dedicated four-way is more here. And then the three buttons is here. But again, he didn't want anything to obstruct in the way. So, awesome. He didn't lose out on the dedicated four-way because of the servos. He's got two servo sticks on it. They switch from four-way to eight-way. Mainly for main arcade, you'll need that. And luckily with LED Blinky, you are able to have that feature where it will automatically switch because LED Blinky has a mind and a, a brain and it'll tell the servos when to switch. It's a very cool feature that definitely changes the game. Now, I'm gonna make a big comment right now about LED Blinky and my personal opinion on it, okay? Customer knows I never did LED Blinky before and I'm telling you, it was a challenge. It was a big challenge. Uh, no lie, it, it, uh, my hair was being pulled out. I was pulling hair on this. So it's pretty awesome. When it works, it works awesome. You launch the game, like right now we're gonna launch the Punisher and basically it's gonna show you what buttons it is and it actually will verbally tell you what the button does. I have the volume off right now. We're just gonna wait for Mame Arcade to launch up and it'll be good to go. Um, it's great. It's awesome. The only kind of comment I have about it is somebody sat down and programmed the games. Did they do all of the games? No, they did not. So out of almost 2,000, almost 3,000 main arcade games, not every game is correct or assigned. What's great is that the games that are not assigned, it'll just kind of low, it'll just light up player one and two, and it'll go to eight way. Um, the games that are assigned, it looks great. It looks awesome. But again, like I said to the customer, it's just every game is not set. Every game is not coordinated. We're gonna launch like the Ghostbusters. The real Ghostbusters. Shoot start. Shoot start. Beam. Beam. Loading complete. Start game. Start game. Insert coin. Insert coin. Primary control. Eight-way joystick. And then the, the servo activates. Awesome. It's very awesome. It's it's cool. Like I said, when it works, it works. Sometimes you could put like the delay in and you know, if you don't like that the guy is talking, you could remove that feature. But games like Street Fighter and all that, it, it'll tell you like, hey, roundhouse kick and all that. Um, there was an option to show the bun layout in this menu. It was just a nightmare. I just have it basically set to always on. Now, the one big thing about LED Blinky that nobody really, not many people understand is that there's a lot of programming that gets into this. Somebody has to sit down and program. I personally have 97 systems, 97 wheels on my 40 terabyte Hyperspin drive. I already told the customer there's no way, there's, like me personally, there's physically no way to map each individual game uh, for it. Now, not in the individual game, consoles such as like the NES, that's just a console, you can map it out, yes, but PS2, PS3, 360, the Switch, it's not mapped out. Then not to mention like I have like, for example, Mortal Kombat 11. Somebody might, might want like, hey, what does this button do? Although it's an Xbox controller, again, I could you could play Mortal Kombat 11 with my arcade sticks, but it's mapped out like an Xbox controller, meaning A and B is at the bottom. But somebody might say, hey, I want Mortal Kombat 11 to say, hey, this is punch, this is kick, this is grab. The only way for you to do that is if you personally sit down and like program it. This is not programmed for it. Honestly, Mame Arcade is set. Consoles such as like the Genesis, the NES, the Super NES, although this customer has the 8 bit controllers, it still lights up the joysticks here, which is okay. It's cool, but again, current gen systems or if you're gonna get very picky and be like hey i want you know street fighter 5 i wanted to say that i'm not doing that i'm sorry to say but i'm not doing that um led blinky is great for mame arcade stuff and again not all mame games are programmed uh whatever game isn't programmed though it's default to just like light up player one and player two 
Um, playing games like PC games, like if I was going to launch right now like Spider-Man, the whole deck goes black. It goes out. And all the guy says is 8-way joystick or Xbox 360 controller. So, uh, again, there's a lot of micro configuring for all that. It works great for MAME Arcade. Other than that, it's, uh, it's a hit or miss. Now, what I suggested, do I recommend LED Blinky? Me, Percy, like, the way this is now, it works, it's great, but I know a customer's gonna be like, hey, Vic, this isn't programmed, like, how do, I'm not doing that. I'm telling you right now, there's no way. I will have no time for that. You have to physically sit and program. There's like three programs behind this that's talking, and honestly, I, I don't have the patience for it. So, in my book, LED Blinky is great for main games. Anything other than that, again, your basic retro consoles, it's mapped to the arcade sticks, the button layouts, like the colors. In all honesty, me personally, if it was me, I wouldn't be putting LED Blinky. I do have customers that want it, and that's A-OK, -okay, but me personally, I'm perfectly fine with like my LEDs being always on or fading in and out. It is a cool feature, don't get me wrong, but again, that's my opinion. Now, real quick, I'm going to talk about one kind of negative, one kind of downside to my specific build. Again, me personally, I feel like other builders don't do what I do because I am me. If you look carefully at my main wheel, my arcade wheel, I have two wheels, which is all ROM that has the clones in it. So you're going to see like three versions of 1942. I have a wheel for main ROMs, which is no clones, only parent ROM, so it's much cleaner list. And I do have a four player main wheel. Aside from like the others like trackball, arcade, schmups, and all that, that's, that's their categories. But the big thing that people don't understand is that my main setup is actually two separate emulators. What does that mean? I have the main ROMs and the all ROMs as one emulator. That emulator is mapped out for player one is player one, player two is player two, player three is player three, and player four is player four, like normal. So for example, in this, if I launch Street Fighter, I'm here, okay? The big thing that again, not many builders know, or they don't even do, or they don't even bother, MAME four player on uh, my setup is actually a whole separate emulator. It is MAME still, but it's a separate emulator. It's not like the other ones. Why do I have that? I'm gonna launch, for example, The Simpsons, okay? The Simpsons, if you remember, it's a four player game. And when you walk up to a systems cabinet, player, this player here was March, this was Homer, this was Bart, this was Lisa, okay? This is where I wanna show you, and this is what I do, okay? If I come here, I'm able to put in Mark. Over here is Homer, Bart, Lisa, okay? Vic, what does this all mean? Basically, in this emulator, player one is really here, which is player three. Player two is really player one, and so forth, okay? Not many people realize that, so again, if I launch The Simpsons on my other all ROMs or main ROMs wheel, player one would be here, which is Mark, which is not correct. And then Homer would be here, which is really supposed to be Bart, which is not correct. So not many people understand that. The big thing that people will definitely recognize it is when you launch a game such as NFL Blitz or NBA Jam. That, again, is another big deal to me because, again, you want to keep it like authentic to how it was. This game, for example, NBA Jam, it's one and two, three and four. So this is one team and this is another team. On my four player main setup, I have it set up accordingly. So if I insert my coins, I'm going to put a bunch in. As you can see, player one, as you can see, player two, player three, player four. So that is how I have mine set up. That's, that's how it works, okay? Again, if I launched NBA Jam in my regular wheel, I do have two player, which is A-OK, -okay. it's one and two, and I have the four player. In, again, the main ROMs or all ROMs, player one is here. So that means in this game, for example, NBA Jam, this is a team and this is a team. Again, I'm just that detailed and that's how I run it. Where am I going with this? A game like this, for example, NBA Jam, because it's launching in four player main, LED Blinky is not communicating with the config file in that emulator. It's, conf it's talking to the other main. Basically what I'm getting at right now, I'm gonna bring you in close. 
This bun layout right now is not correct for NBA Jam, meaning LED blinky LED wise. Let me bring you in closer. So as you can see, this right here, these three buns, that's not how NBA Jam is played. Not, it's not right. This might be okay for you because that's honestly how it's wired though, because it's one, two, three. In this case, one, two, three is, light, is lit for LED blinking, and this here is one, two, three. So it looks correct here, but it's not correct for player one and two. Now though, in this game specifically, this is not the button layout. My button layout is really this, these three here, one, two, three. This was like turbo, shoot, or pass, or pass and shoot. But turbo, that's the big deal here. Basically what I'm getting at right now is because this is launching a separate emulator, LED Blinky is reverting to the other emulator, which is this is one, two, three. The only way to alleviate that is that I would have to go in and launch each four player game in my two player main kind of emulator and adjust it. I'm not doing that. That's over, you're talking over like 300 games. It's, 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 not, it's not happening. So now, ultimately, Vic, what does that mean? Honestly, when it comes to the four player setup for LED Blinky, it's not correct. My buttons are correct, meaning this is how it is laid out. You know, this is, this is my turbo button here. But as far as like player two, again, I'm using a button here that's not lit. Unfortunately, and with all the trial and error I did, there is no way to map two separate mains. Um, again, just to kind of clarify, because I might be confusing somebody, uh, my other wheels, for example, such as the trackball or the schmups, that is all communicating with the old ROMs wheel. So these work. It's just the four player one because it's a totally separate emulator. It's not talking to the correct config file and four player really, it's just, it's not right. So now again, I'm, that's me. That's how I do it. I'm the type of person like NBA Jam. I don't want to play with these top three buttons. That's not the right way to do it. I. I could probably say and confidently that no one, no other builder goes in depth like that and thinks that through. Um, you know, for example, TMNT, it's one, two, three, four. I'm already naming three games. That's why I have the four player emulator separate. That's just, that's, that's how I want it. I want it to be as true and authentic to an actual arcade game. The Simpsons, TMNT, WrestleFest, that's, that's how I want it. And I'm pretty sure they said, you talk to any other builder, I guarantee you they don't have, they probably have one, two, three, and four, just like how it is, but I'm not like that. Uh, I went, I did a lot of trial and error. I'm not, it's just LED blinky. It only allows for one main config. Unless somebody else knows how to do it, the only way I could do it is if I alter the actual game. Um, so for example, right now, if I go one game that I did alter, and I've always had it altered, but I, I could do it now, which is Centipede. Centipede is an amazing game. I love this game. Uh, my dad, for example, oh, he plays with, he's better off with the wheel on his left hand. So my situation here, I set this, I went and I pressed tab and I configured this machine to have two fire buttons. So player two's fire button and player one's fire button both work. So you could either go righty or you could go lefty. I did that on purpose because that's just how I am. That's what it is. That's somewhere you could, you know, you could customize it and such. But as you can see, this lit because it's talking to the correct main. The only one you might have an issue with, you will have an issue with, is main four player. Now, I mean, a positive with LED Blinky is that it does work pretty good with the servos. The servo sticks, like you saw in the overview, it, there's a gate here with the motor and actually swaps player one and player two from eight way to four way. So instead of getting a dedicated four way, this customer has two servos. Very awesome, cool stuff. Looking at the price tag, um, listen, in his situation, because he wanted to make sure no obstructions, it works. It, it definitely works for what it is. It's just there is a, there's a price to pay for it. The, the cost of the joysticks alone, and you have to get the board. There is a little tiny USB board with it. Another quick note about LED Blinky is that it does need a program. It needs, it needs a program to be running in the background. So essentially right now there's Hyperspin running, I have Joy to Key running, we have the Active Marquee, and we have LED Blinky alongside of something called, um, for the servos, I forgot the name of the program that's in Ultimark. But right now there's technically five programs running in the background. So with that, there is more stuff happening. So 
you know, nothing slowing down wise, but uh, there's just, there's a lot of action going on behind the scenes. Servos are great. Me personally, I would just rather have a dedicated four way. LED Blinky works for when it should. Like I said, unfortunately with the four player, there's nothing I can do unless I physically sat down. This just has to go out, but you know, you have to physically sit down and only program one main. Again, pretty sure 99% of the other people, they don't really notice that. But for my specific build, I have four players set up differently because that's what it should be. That's how it should be. Gonna turn up real quick on like custom because I am custom. I gotta do everything custom. This customer obviously does have the custom button inserts. Uh, I'll probably do B-roll and I'll show you what the buttons look like. So you have player. The players are this Madman logo guys. So you can see one and two. You can see the mouse click. You can see the pause and the favorite button. A lot of customizing for it. Aside from like the buttons itself, I even went in depth and customized loading screens for it. So I'm gonna launch, for example, a GameCube game. GameCube is one of those kind of few systems that need to unzip and extract. And it's a perfect opportunity to kind of show off the loading screen. So I'm gonna long press on this real quick and you're gonna see the custom loading screen. Some people might not think it's a big deal, but this to me, it's custom. This is what's awesome right here. You can take a picture of that right now. He's got this Mad Men themed cabinet along with loading. Very awesome stuff. Now, as far as other stuff of custom, this customer wanted bezels. Um, he didn't want full screen stretch and all that. So games like MAME has the appropriate bezels, but other systems like the Genesis, it needed a bezel. So I actually went and I did this work hard, play harder, and I put it on the sides. Again, little details like that, that's what separates me from everybody else. And I love, I just love it. It's just, that's custom right there. That's like, whoa, that's me, that's mine. So it's cool. So another kind of cool little custom, unique kind of feature that he requested. There's two things that he actually wanted. He was very specific. He did want a specific Donkey Kong, which is known as Donkey Kong Pauline Edition. So I did add that in my main wheel. He did want the favorites feature. Uh, I normally don't have that, uh, but it was a quick and easy add. Favorites though is based on the wheel. So right now I'm inside of the main or main main ROMs and it has this its own favorite wheel. If he goes into like the four player, the favorites wheel doesn't translate to other wheels basically. So to make him easy on searching, he did want the favorites feature and it's there and I did put the Pauline there. So as you can see, there's only one game inside the favorites. I'm gonna launch this game real quick and go about the last kind of request he had. He did request to have pause button. He did want his games to be able to pause. Normally I didn't do that, I never normally do it, but it's honestly a very simple thing. I basically come here and as you can see, pause. When you do press the pause button, LED Blinky does its thing um, where it kind of like, it'll re-say the buttons and it'll do its animation. And it's pretty cool, it's not too bad. This is a game right now, for example, it's kind of perfect to kind of see it. Um, LED Blinky, this doesn't have a profile for LED Blinky. So it's just all the buttons are on as far as players one and two. Players three and four though are off, but there you go. All right, now we're gonna touch on probably the most complicated part of this build. And that is all the other controllers. Um, you know, not many people see the back end of this. I'll be honest, it, it was tough. I'm not gonna say a nightmare, but it was tough. Big thing that people don't really understand or see is that adding controllers, it, it, it has like unique, number one has like unique USB kind of numbers and IDs. Um, and number two, it, it, it just, it interferes. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be weird for me to do it, but I'm gonna, we're gonna start with one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all three of them, but I want the customer to see exactly what he's gonna experience because this, it basically took like an, an easy system, like my normal hyperspins. It's with the Xbox controllers, it's simple. Like it's not that big of a headache. This now with all these extra controllers, am I saying that it's gonna be a flawless experience? No, for this customer it's not. It's gonna be something that you have to kind of learn, take a breather and just prepare yourself because stuff will break. Um, what am I getting at? Basically right now my joysticks are set to one and four. USB IDs number one and four. My Zinmos one, two, three and four. 
These 8-bit controllers with these dongles, Windows just takes it and then starts moving around the existing already plugged in USBs and you can't do anything about it. What am I saying? Basically like I'm gonna put in the NES one. That NES one takes play, takes the position of ID number three, which is joystick three. So now it's like my player three turned to player four. My player four turned to player five. Again, it's it that's what it is, like layman's term. So some games like Honestly, it might even knock out player one's arcade sticks, but I'll be honest, I sat down, I did a lot of configuring, and no matter what really happens, he should still be able to navigate hyperspin and the joysticks no matter what. So let's cut to the chase, let's, let's just start. So I'm gonna start first with the NES controller, okay? Here was the, how the game plan was originally when I was speaking to him. There are six dongles for these six controllers. Each controller needs its own dongle, right? My original game plan and thought process was, hey, we can just leave the dongles inside the computer, you don't have to worry about anything. I was dead wrong because every time I restarted Windows, it just kept changing ID numbers and at the time I didn't have the control deck ready. Once I put the control deck, that's when I noticed that joysticks and IDs were just, it was a headache. Basically now, yes, I will label these dongles accordingly but there are dongles. Out of the six, two of them I was able to leave inside of the PC. That's the Super Nintendo ones. The Genesis controllers, the NES one, and the TurboGrafx, you have to put the dongle in as you go. Now, I mean, I'm gonna talk and do it at the same time. I just took all the dongles to make my life easy. Um, but right now we're gonna play NES, okay? The big thing that people don't really understand is that right now, again, I have only four arcade sticks communicating right now, okay? I wanna play some NES right now. I wanna play some Mario 3, right? So let's look for our game. Um, you could even do this while working for the game, but the big thing I'm gonna basically try to tell you is you have to put this dongle in before you start the game, okay? This dongle has to be plugged in before. Now, the big thing about these dongles though, for example, this controller specifically, once you plug it in, it's good, but the controller's not on, but it did register the USB. So, big thing is basically, if you wanna play NES, put the, put the dongle in, and then launch the game. That's how you have to do it, okay? If I launch this and then plug it in, the system now is confused with what ID is what. It's, it's a must, you have to do it like that. And as you can see, I'm able to play it, awesome. Vic, hey, now I wanna play two players, can I just, no. If you wanna do two players, you have to exit, put the dongle in, and then relaunch. You have to do it that way, there's no other way to do it because right now, in all honesty, it went one, two, three, four, five. That's, that's what it is logistically. If I go into Joy to Key and I show you, that's what it is, that's how it's reading it. So, basically, this extra step of like, putting in the dongle, it has to be done this way. Now, when it came to the trial and the error and the testing, just to show you because some people are like, oh, you know, is it really working? Yes, it works, look. Now, it's crazy with this specific 8 bit This is button one, this is button two, and so is this. So, I thought it was gonna be one, two, three, four. Like, I can map turbo, you can't, it's just two buttons. So, the way this is made, it's only two buttons, that's it. But as you can see, I'm able to play, I'm able to enjoy, that is what the customer wants. The big headache I was having, and we're gonna probably see it now, not now, but while I was having it, was do I unplug the dongle and then exit to bring Joytsky back to player one and two? Again, with so much configuring and so much testing, I could exit this game right now, and I will still have control of hyperspin with the joystick, okay? Hypothetically, I could also use this, which is cool, um, Cause you know, hey, you know, I, I could do, that, that's just an example of programming. That's what I want to explain to you is that there's a lot of testing to get to this point that I am at. Now, hey Vic, I want to play, uh, we're going to grab the, the Genesis controller. You have to be sure that you unplug this. If you don't unplug it, you're going to have a bad time. Now, I shouldn't really say that. You're going to start Genesis and be like, why isn't this working? Vic, it's broken. No, you have to like exit, exit the emulator and then 
put everything on and then start the emulator. That's where I'm getting at with this. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna grab the Genesis. My Genesis controller, there is one that has the number one on it. That is just player one. That is another example of you have to go with player one. If I try to launch player two, that's what it is. The dongles look alike, but again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label all the dongles for him and all that. So right now I could put this in. This one is actually one that like, I plugged it in, but you have to actually turn on the controller for it to connect. So I'm on now, but again, I still have control with the arcade sticks. We're gonna do a Genesis game. And I know I did it in the overview, I did it in like the preview, the video, the launch video, but I'm a big Contra fan, so I'm gonna go into Genesis and we're gonna launch some Contra, okay? It's also cool so you can actually see how the system works and all that. But again, I'm just trying to emphasize that you have to test. Uh, that's just what I do, that's what it is, okay? Again, my controller is on, I can now launch this game, okay? That's the big thing right now. The game is launching and it says, hey, this, gen this actually right now is controller three. It's USB three. So it now goes, hey, I recognize USB three as your controller and I'm good to go. See that? Vic, I want two players now. You have to exit the game. You have to. If I put that dongle in, it's not gonna recognize it. It's basically before the emulator activates, you have to have your controls in. But Awesome, that is what it is. Now again, what I was fighting with and testing with is if I escape, before when I fixed it all, I lost control of the joysticks. But now, because I am me, this is beautiful. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Basically, if he now, let's say he didn't have this controller on, and he launched Genesis, and then he tried to play it, Vic, it's not working, I would just say, listen, exit the emulator, put on the controller, and then launch it, and you're good to go. So, now, um, I want to do two player. Fine, cool. I'll take my second dongle. And as you can see though, I exited the emulator. That is what you have to understand. That is what it is. That, there's again, so many USBs, that's what it is. Although I plugged in the dongle, I have to make sure that this is on. And you hear a Windows chime. That's what it is. These 8-bit controllers, that's what it is. But again, I still have control of my arcade sticks. I'm going to launch and now we're going to have two player gameplay on it. Oh, like I said, it's just, I make these videos so the customer can see what's happening and also to educate you that people assume that this is easy. Oh, it's easy. And like I said, right now, Joy, uh, LED Blinky is active and it's saying the buttons, but in reality, it's not. But as you can see, player one and player two, we are able to game. You don't understand. What you see right now, what I'm doing now, that's like a solid two days of just trial, error, pulling my hair out. That's what it is, but when it works, it works, that's it. So again, I could escape out. Essentially, now though, I have two joysticks on, but I could still navigate hyperspin. That is just, that's a big VP, man. That's, that's what I do. Now, see, I'm walking away. I forgot, I need the, I need the dongles. <laughs> you gotta take the dongles, that's all it is. The only dongles that are inside is the Super Nintendo dongles. Now, let's make a quick comment about the Super Nintendo controllers. I love these controllers, these are great. It's just like the 8 bit whatever, however they design it, or as far as like the software-wise on it, it's iffy because of these IDs and all that. What happens when you do two-player, he wanted this controller specifically for player one. So I have that mapped. Awesome. What's crazy with these controllers is if I turn this one on, it bumps this to player two, and it bumps this to player one. There's no way around it. I am sorry, buddy, but there is just no way around it. Right now, the controllers are not on. So again, for the customer, as you can see how I program things, no matter what you do, you could turn it on now, you could do it before you get into the actual system, meaning, you know, this is the system. The big thing is that you have to make sure the, the controller is on before you actually start the game. That is the only thing. So I'm gonna go right now to the Super Nintendo. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna launch, for example, now before I start a game, I'm gonna turn this on. You basically push the start button, it blinks, and then it connects. Awesome. Um, let's, do, let's do one player, okay? I'm gonna do one player. As you can see, I could control here, but I also do have control here. I'm gonna do, uh, man, Super Nintendo. Amazing, oh, look at that Royal Rumble. Oh my God, I used to love just blacking people with the chair. Let's do it. 
game launched, controller on. That's the big thing. Because this controller is on, the emulator is saying, hey, I'm recognizing your controller, it is player three or ID three, and you're good to go. And as you can see, awesome. I, I, I love every second of it. It's great. Shoot the wrestler, awesome, right? Now, just for kicks, I mean, I can't do it now, I should've done it on Street Fighter. If I turn this on, it's not gonna work. And honestly, you might risk kind of confusing the system, so we're gonna exit out, okay? Now again, I have player one on, let's see if it's gonna do it. I'm gonna put on player two, and just to make my life easy, I'm gonna go to Street Fighter. So let's go to T and then go up from there. Um, Super Street Fighter, yeah, why not? And we're gonna see now if this is player one or if this is player one. So, and now again. Button A, left shoulder, right shoulder. LED blinking is active and is saying these buttons here are that system, but in reality it's not. Okay, let's just see now. If I go to versus, game start, versus, awesome. Look, 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 player two. And player one. So no matter what, I picked, I picked uh, E Honda. No matter what, it just bumps it. So if you're playing two players, bud, unfortunately you can't, it, it, it's, it's an eight bit old thing. There's really nothing I could do about it, but we're gonna make sure that player two works. I'm sorry, so this is player one, as you can see. Awesome, and player two, awesome. Sweet, it works, awesome. Like I said, the one challenge I was facing, and I was gonna say it in the video, I was gonna say, hey, be sure you turn off the controller before you exit the emulator. And that's where me personally, I was like, I lost control. But like I said, I gotta test it for you. I gotta do my thing. This is what you this is what you commissioned me for. That's what I do. And there you have it. That is the controls on that. Amazing. Now, Vic, I mean, what do you do though if, if I can't use these? What do you, I normally suggest these Xbox controllers. These Xbox controllers don't even get recognized as like IDs. They just work. Um, I don't have to worry about turning it off. I, it works. It, that's how it is. It's, that's what's so great with these Xbox controllers is that I can simply put it on and one dongle connects six Xbox controllers. It's funny, me and Canada had this joke. He even said, he's like, let's call it Project Dongle because there's, there's like 20 USB connections going on here. But again, he wants these controls, I, I made it work. That's the big thing that I want people to understand is that I made it work. That's, that's why I, I just feel good. I could say that proudly that I made it work. You had an idea, you gave me the chance, we made it work. I now go into the PC game. So also Xbox though works for like the Wii. It works for the Wii U, it works for the PS2, the PS1. I just wanted to show off like a, a PC game just for kicks, um, Red Dead, I, this, this, I'm actually now at 300 PC games. That's across racing, arcade, and your regular PC stuff. So there's a lot. Uh, this was a new one, Destroy All Humans. Uh, and as you can see, I'm actually able to navigate with the Xbox controller. I can still navigate with the arcade sticks. Again, that's just a lot of consuming stuff. So I have the enter button on A there, or I could have done that. Again, there's a lot to it. And as you can see, we're launching up. I love it. I love everything about it. Active marquee. Man, I kind of don't want to give it away. <laughs> but yes, as you can see, Xbox controller works. I don't have to worry about anything. Games like this for the PC, I have these normally set that you have to exit in game. There is no escape button to exit. You have to exit in game. But as you can see, I don't have to play it, but it works. If I quit, Usually on a PC game like this, it might take a second to react, and as you can see, I am now able to move, and as you can see, I could do either Xbox or that. Awesome. So now we're gonna talk about the Jolt light guns, the ever so popular Jolts. Um, you can see a lot of my videos, I urge you to watch the Rambo cabinet video. Uh, same theory with the Jolts, they do have IDs, they are recognized as USB devices, so, if you're not playing a gun game, don't go into Super Nintendo with the gun attached. You will get confused. It'll 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 lose its mind. Uh, but basically, any gun you want to any gun game you want to run it in the gun game wheel. I'm gonna launch a main arcade game um, just for you, bud, so you know you do have two gray jolts, but the actual lenses are two different colors. So shout out to Ray Arpeg Electronics. Red is player one, blue is player two, and basically we're gonna launch some carnival. Why not? Is it carnival or carnival? Carnival. 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 Carnival.
Carnival. <laughs> but big thing with these is that it's just the accuracy on this is great. It's awesome, as you can see. So I'm right now about three feet away, and I'm good. Me personally, I can't. I, a uh, ray that says like you know you got to emphasize the accuracy number one the accuracy and also how close you could be me personally i'm never this close i need to like extend out but it's also great to know that you could be like you know six seven feet away and you're still accurate again that is because of the four led infrared lights around it and such main market like i said you don't need the actual buttons here for the coins i have that set to the actual gun so I'm hitting the left button there, you can see credits 15, and start is the trigger. So that's how I have mine set up. I love it that way. This way you're not like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go back and you know, I feel like you're dancing. Um, again, now remember this does have the flush mount female barrels that I put on this. Jolts do need power. There's two big power brakes in the cab because if you want that, you're gonna need that. So awesome, awesome stuff. And again, with the jolt, you do have the pedal add-on, which is great, it's awesome stuff. The pedal is awesome. You basically plug it in and you're able to rock and roll. Cool, it's, it's awesome. Now, same theory though. Hey Vic, I wanna bring player two in, do I just plug it in? No, you would wanna exit the emulator and then plug in your gun. That's the best way to say it. Also, real quick, for the customer, cause he wanted it, like I said, pause is there. So I did it in the preview, I made a fake phone call. Pause, I, I never usually had pause set, but it's honestly an easy setup. It's just kind of cool to see it like working. And then like, you're back. back, back. That's it, I gotta reload that. <laughs> awesome, it's, it's awesome stuff, it's beautiful. Now I'll pause real quick and I'll grab the pedal. Why not? This game doesn't really use the pedal, but the pedal is also your right click. So games could use it. Uh, I never, I didn't test this beforehand, but uh, I, uh, hypothetically, it should be the reload. So if I unpause, let's see if I take a shot. It did reload. Yeah. Awesome. It's cool. There you go. Cool. I mean, honestly, it's for time prices, but as you could see, you could reload. Look at that. Because I got the hater. They're like, oh, you push your money. No, I'm not. It's cool. Now also, if you don't get the Jolts, Ray R Pack Electronics has a USB pedal option, which is, it works, it's cool, it's awesome. And then you exit out, and you're back into the interface. Awesome, it's beautiful. When, it, when stuff works, especially when I record it, in like one take, I love it. <laughs> so now also keep in mind the advantage to this PC build is that it's not just arcade stuff. You could essentially exit out and use this computer. You could connect it to the internet if you wanted to do. You could, you know, go on your email if you want. Or, like me, because we are gamers, I do have Steam, Battle.net, and Epic Games on this. Basically, I always do it for you. I do make a kind of fake email for you. Very simple. It's kind of tied to, like, the theme of the cabinet. And I put Steam on. And Steam and Epic Games give you free games. Um, you know, Rocket League. Um, you want to play Fortnite. You could do that. I mean, essentially with his kind of deck, you could essentially put a keyboard and the mouse and you're good to go. Normally though, I do suggest when you are regularly gaming, I do suggest that you disconnect from the internet. There is one game or two games? One game specifically, you want to make sure you're not connected to the internet and that is Street Fighter V. Um, you don't want to be connected to the internet for Street Fighter V. It will give you an, an error. Like right now, I am actually not connected to the internet. Good, I am not. I'm not connecting to the internet. But basically, I don't have these programs set to launch when the PC launches. So if he wanted to go ahead and play some, you know, Steam or he wanted to play, uh, my big thing I always tell people was Epic Games. Uh, Epic Games gives you two free games a month. So he has it, you could just go in, you could download it and you could play it. It does not go into hyperspin unless you let me know and I could put it, but it won't go into hyperspin automatically. I have to configure that. So now one quick thing I want to talk about, and yes, I tested, I have over, I think, 190 light gun games. I sat down and tested, besides like MAME, MAME, it's fine, but the other ones that are like PS2, PS1, and like the PC games, I test each individual one. And only on this system, the only one game that 
has an issue is House of the Dead 2. We're going to do that right now. It's also going to lead into the hyper marquee and all that. So I'm going to launch this House of the Dead 2. I'm going to tell you what happens. It only happens on, on your system. I don't know why. I get a message on the screen. It says, attention, the 3060 Ti uh, lighting acceleration cable device will be used. Great. You might go and press yes right now. You're actually going to want to press no. That screen, that pop is going to happen again. And then you're going to press yes. I understand. It's like, what the, f I get it. If I did not do that, this screen goes down to your active marquee. Why? I don't know. But that is the only game that I realized that this happens on. I, I don't ask me why. I don't know. But as you can see right now, House of the Dead 2 works. If I did not press no and then yes, this screen here would just go here and yeah, that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you that this game does work. Um, why? Like I said, how, Vic, how would you? I tested it. I'm telling you, I test every game, especially with the gun wheel, it gets tested. And that is for damn sure. I have to do that. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Now it also brings me into the active marquee. I'm going to bring you in close because you can actually see that it happened right now. As you can see right now, the active marquee is like, what Vic, what happened? I've been doing a lot of trial and error on this. Some of the games force full screen, some of them don't, but I think honestly, it's something with the aspect ratio of this monitor that kind of goes haywire. This right here is honestly hyperspin. What am I getting at? Uh, honestly, probably a couple of the PC games and the techno parrot games you're either going to get the marquee or you're going to see that. Vic, can you do anything about it? No, I, I can't. It's either that and play the game or have a marquee and just not be able to play the game. So I'm pretty sure you would pick the gameplay over that. Active marquee is great. I didn't have that issue when I was doing the ultimate console with the mini Pi monitor. Only on this build so far. That's what leads me to... Is it because of the 4K resolution? I, I have your monitor set to 4K. Is it because of the, I think it's like a 16 by 10. I did try to set this to 1080p and you had the black bars and it looked like, it looked horrible. So I didn't want to result to that. So just keep that in mind, yes. I know for a fact, a couple of PC games and techno parrot games, you're gonna, you're gonna get that. But as far as like MAME and NES and all that, you know, you're talking about like a 5% of the system will give you that, and it's not that detrimental. I just wanted to give you a heads up. So I said, I'm, I'm very sure, I'm gonna actually do it now for you. I'm gonna relaunch House of Dead. I'm very sure it's a full screen issue, and I'm very sure it's like a resolution issue. So right now, instead of me pressing no, I'm gonna press yes. And, yeah. <laughs> Again, because I didn't press, and now, not to mention, see, it says here it went to 2560 by 1080. So I think it's a full screen force issue. It might be, I actually did it with 1080p. So I think it's about the full screen. But as you can see, if you hit yes, that's what happens. But again, it's no worries. You exit out and it'll revert back and you'll be A-OK. It is literally only that game. Everything else works perfectly fine. That one game gives you that error, that message. It's not even an error. It's just saying, hey, we're going to use hardware. <laughs> And that's it. It's it's pretty insane. It's it's crazy. Um, I'm trying to think of a PC game to show you that active marquee thing. Uh, let me think of a game, and then I'll, I'll show you. Hold on. But I found a game to show it off real quick. So I have full screen mode on, and we're gonna basically just try to play around with it. And as you can see, like the marquee shifted a little bit there. That's correct. That's 4K resolution. Let's keep going. There you go, see? So I, from my understanding, my understanding is the full screen and like the resolution is what's messing up the marquee. Only on a couple of handful of games, honestly. Like I said, it's nothing detrimental, it's not crazy, but I just wanna be sure um, that you know you see it. I even went and tried to like move the marquee in the display settings. I did all that and still, I had that little bit of a headache. So I just wanted to keep that in mind and just show that off. Now the marquee's gone altogether, but um, yes, there you go. There's an example of like just 
something that I noticed and again, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but you never know. So now for the customer, we're gonna actually do a whole kind of shutdown and reboot kind of sequence going on. So again, Hyperspin is exited, I'm on the desktop. There is an arcade button on the top right of the cabinet, right behind the TV. Not in the back, but where the mount is. You press it one time and the system will do its thing. That blue screen you might get for maybe about 30 seconds. Just let it do its thing, let it shut down. My TV specifically is set to store mode. I have that set on purpose so that it turns on once power is given. Definitely before you cut the power though, you do want to be sure to turn off your TV. If you don't have that option, uh, I always turn it off because you don't want to just kill the power to a TV. So let that kind of turn off. Right now the computer is off, but as you can see with the computer off, LED blinky, like there's still power going to the PC. So you still have the LED lights on here. Your LED lights are on because of your Govi lights and also the fans will always stay on. Even if you turn off the Govi lights, the fans in the rear will always stay on, okay? So, I'm gonna turn off the power. Completely dead. I always say give it about maybe, you know, 30 seconds, 15, 30 seconds. Just wanna make sure everything's kind of powered down and such. I'm gonna come now and I'm gonna turn on the power, okay? Big thing now is that before you hit that power button on the PC, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the screen here is on, which it will turn on on its own. And you're gonna also wanna make sure that your TV is on. Just do that, please. Because uh, if you turn on the PC before the TV is on, then it's gonna think that this is display one and it'll be confusing. Again, Canada has its own TV. As you can see, both displays are on. I'm gonna push this button one time and one time only. You're not gonna hear a beep. You, you might hear the fans. You could, you could hear the PC fans kind of spool up but that's all you're gonna hear. Your screen will change here, that means everything is good to go. Now, you're the customer, you let me know that, hey Vic, I want Hyperspin to start when the PC starts. So, I do have that set up. Hyperspin is set to launch after 30 seconds of being logged in. So, you're gonna see the desktop for 30 seconds, then Hyperspin will start. Me, personally, I don't do that because I use my system for other things such as Steam and Counter-Strike and I don't always go into arcade, so you as a customer could let me know. Other reason I do that though is that there is other programs that need to be launching before everything launches. It's kind of like Windows. Windows has to do its thing. It's got to start system 32, whatever it is. But in all honesty, as far as arcade side, there's two programs, which is that background, background something, background gaming. Uh, basically, it's a couple of games that will full screen stretch. And also the servo program. There's a servo program that lets you press F4 or F8 to switch. That has to start before anything. So that right now technically started, and like I said, just let it do its thing. Hyperspin will start on its own. It's after 30 seconds, and there you go. Hyperspin has started, and now we are able to play. Awesome. Normally, I do suggest that, you know, if you're gonna keep it as an arcade setup like this, keep the internet disconnected. Um, don't go into Bluetooth, uh, or I should say airplane mode. Do not go into airplane mode, because then you're, Controllers won't connect for some reason. The 8 bitos they go haywire. If you go into Bluetooth, they won't connect. Um, only one game really you have to be careful of if you are connected to the internet, that is Street Fighter V. Um, I do have Street Fighter V obviously set to the arcade sticks. For some reason, Street Fighter V, it's looking for an update. If you are connected to the internet, it will the game won't launch anymore. It'll bring you to the menu, but you won't be able to play. Uh, if that happens, just let me know. It's a very quick and easy kind of fix. And I'm able to navigate inside of the PC arcade wheel. These are all arcade style games and multiplayer games. Not all of them work with arcade sticks, but a good 80% of them, they do work. And it's awesome. You just game on, my guy. That's it. It's awesome. Go back in and out. Big thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna launch. For example, let's launch Street Fighter Five. Screw it. Big thing when it comes to like the PC games and even Techno Parrot. You're just gonna launch it. Like, you're gonna hold down, and that's it. Let it do its thing. You might be like, Vic, what happened? Oh, did I break it? No, it just, it's gotta do its thing. For example, the Street Fighter V, it takes a second, it's gotta have that screen up. Just gotta let it do its thing, okay? You didn't break it. Uh, just, again, let it do its thing. Techno Parrot is an even bigger monster or a headache, because it's got like five things that pop up. Just gotta let it do its thing. That's, I can't stress it enough. But I always like doing Street Fighter V because it's just cool to see. It works with arcade sticks. And again, it is set to 4K, two player arcade stick. 
Some games such as Mortal Kombat 11 would have been great to have eight buttons, but it's nothing groundbreaking. It's not game breaking. You could technically play the games without the eight buttons, but it's just awesome to see like Street Fighter 5 with arcade sticks. I'm not gonna waste too much time on this video, but we'll launch it. I'll just, you know, do a Hadouken and call it a day. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's just a great system. I have hit 300 PC games. So that's PC arcade style games, PC games, and um, PC racing games. I'm at 300 games right now, which is a lot. It's Again, I, I got games that I personally would play a lot of, and that's much like Grand Theft Autos, and it's a banger of a system. He has everything in this under one hood, and it should bring him endless joy, to be really honest. We can skip the cutscenes, and then we can just basically game on. Sure, you can, I'll throw a hot you can, why not? There you go. Boom. Now again, as far as the PC games, only like three or four of them will let you escape out on a hold. Uh, it's just really TMNT um, and uh, Dawn of Monsters. But games like this, for example, you have to exit from the actual game. And when you do, you regain focus and you're good to go. Again, not like other emulators where you hold the X to exit. It's just a couple of PC games that will let you do that. The other ones, majority of them, you have to exit in game. Am I missing anything else? <laughs> I don't think I am, but um, there you guys have it. That is Project Kanda. Uh, I will be sending him a separate video. I'm going to be labeling all the USBs. Got to be sure that all the USBs get plugged in in the same exact spot to ensure flawlessness. But there you guys have it. Big VP Game Case Arcades. Project Canada, man. I hope you enjoy it, dude. I, I really, I really hope you do.